Hi there and welcome to uh, the P product data management event with uh, myself, Daniel. Uh, and today's topic is going to be debunking the myths of product data management. So this is the third part of our data management series that's been hosted by Baker Baines. And I just want to run through the agenda very quickly with you. So today's agenda, we're going to have a quick introduction to the presenters uh, on screen. Um, we're going to have a quick look at who is Baker Baines. I'll take you through a quick recap from our last event. And then uh, we will go into the debunking of the myths regarding product data management. Um, we've got a, a key takeaway part uh, at the end of it, and we will open up the uh, floor for questions. So just very quickly, your present. On the left is myself, Daniel, uh, and I've been around the Autodesk industry for the past oh, over, over 10 years uh, with, with specializations in product data management, uh, uh, process plant, energy and mining. And I'm really, really passionate about the topic of discussion today, which is data management. Um, on the right, uh, it gives me great pleasure and excitement to welcome our host, uh, our co my co-speaker and guest speaker for uh, today's presentation, Mr. Lee Dodds, out uh, of the UK. So Lee is one of Autodesk's top PLM and PDM technical specialists. Uh, he has an extensive knowledge on PDM and is here today to, to do some debunking of the myths that we commonly associate with data management and product data management itself. Welcome, Lee, and thank you for taking the time for joining us today. And thanks for the introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. Very happy and excited to be here. Thank you, Lee. And I'm sure Lee's going to provide us with some very, very insightful and exciting uh, presentation on the debunking of the myths later on. But before we get there, uh, Let's have a look at just a quick introduction to Baker Baines. So at Baker Baines, we, we strongly believe, and this is our we solve customer problems through digital transformation, helping them design and make a better world. So what does that mean? For us, it is twofold. Uh, software, purchasing software is just transactional, but adopting software is transformational. Transformational to the company and the users that make use of that software. So we form believers, believers of that transformation and adoption. And as you can see, we have quite a big footprint in the different uh, industries and disciplines that we serve. The build environment is one of them, so infrastructure, energy, manufacturing, as well as process plant. And I think the common uh, denominator here is that product data management is, uh, is a common factor across all of these industries. And having a proper data management solution in place allows you to manage uh, your intellectual property as well as your data in the correct and efficient way. So just a quick recap from our last session, uh, our last event. Um, so we, we, in the last event, we dug quite deep into PDM, so product data management. And a nice uh, definition of it is to having a strategy of managing your product related information and engineering processes all in one spot. Now, this can mean various factors, apart from it just having a common data environment for your uh, engineering data and related information, you can also share information outside to colleagues and stakeholders that may need access to the design. And this is something that was, 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 was quite a big topic in our last event, where we discussed the main areas of it. And it all boils down to three main areas. The people, people that create the data and manage that data, the process of managing that data that's being created, as well as the technologies underpins uh, managing data that we create. And in a normal or the perfect world environment, we know that um, on the left-hand side, you see that these are the people that manage and create data and access data on a daily basis. On the right, it could be people that need to access data, uh, project stakeholders, uh, workshop staff, or even outside collaborators that we invite into our project. However, it would look straightforward, uh, you know, just by having uh, to, to, to manage the data, However, in some, in some cases, we don't. We use the incorrect methods to do it and incorrect tools to manage the data that is, uh, that's created by us. And it generally looks quite messy. So if we look at that in a deeper, deeper scale of problems that we've assessed in the past were not having a common data environment, 
not having data security, not implementing standards across the environment, as well as version control and no collaboration. And these areas are affected by our three main uh, pillars, which is the people, process, and technology that underpin it. And we find that by having a, a, current, uh, having a, a product data management strategy in place, it's the fundamental this type of information where we can solve these problems and ensure that our data is being protected every step of the way. Okay, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Lee uh, to take us through the mid-busting of the common data environment or common, common product data management uh, challenges that we see uh, across. Thanks, Daniil. Let me just... Okay, can I just get a quick screen check? Yes, that's, that's looks good for my side, Lee. Excellent, okay, so um, good afternoon, everyone. Today we're gonna start and talking about time and why is time important? Well, to a business, Time is money. But what does that have to do with data management, I hear you ask? Well, we believe by putting data at the center, we can help improve inefficiencies within a business by giving people back time. Time to concentrate on the tasks they were employed to do. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, Autodesk is helping companies to reimagine their digital manufacturing strategies. And we start by putting data information at the center and giving people access to it. My name is Lee Dodds and I'm part of the technical specialist team with Autodesk based out of the UK and today we're going to debunk some of those myths around data management. And hopefully we're going to show you some extra features that you might not know about from an Autodesk point of view and show you some new snippets of technology as well. At the end I'm quite looking forward to hearing from you so feel free to post any questions or even share your own experiences when it comes to any data collaboration challenges that you might have seen in the in over the last period of time. But first, let's talk about why data management is such a hot topic. <clears throat> the top and bottom of it is products are becoming more complex and there's a greater expectations for designs to be created faster with greater accuracy and with even more support and information like metadata or visualizations. We're gonna talk about some common challenges related to time. How can we save time, improve time, time to market, time to value, and we'll do that how you can better collaborate and share data with your internal or external teams. Those efficiency gains then can be solved by making changes or solving problems like this. Making sure the right data is available to the right person. This could relate to the latest reversion or release of a drone, for example. Many companies struggle with the basics of PDM, product data management, controlling, accessing, sharing product information. For those that work with CAD files on a daily basis, it's not a, probably a surprise that finding the right information and wasting time searching for data are challenges reported by almost half of the respondents to a recent tech clarity survey. Non-value added activities then can be defined as a number of things, like trying to find correct information, re-entering data into another system or waiting for sign off, check and approval. Waste and engineering productivity is one of the most common reasons that companies consider PDM. Now, collaboration is an essential part of a product development process, but nearly all companies surveyed said it was a significant challenge. There's collaboration, in, collaboration issues internally for the technical resources, such as working on the wrong or outdated drawing or data. But more commonly are those challenges with working externally to working internally as well, or maybe even sharing information with your customers or suppliers outside of your firewall, outside of your company. The common thread then is access to data inf information with no common data platform to manage that. So what we'd like to know then is firstly, how are you managing your data today? So I believe, Daniil, we've got a quick poll for the audience. Yes, that's right. So I'm going to launch the poll now. 
So we'll give you a, a quick minute to answer this and, and then we'll take the results from there. Okay, so I think we can close the poll now. Uh, interesting enough, Lee, that we found that 30% uh, of people uh, respond, respond to the poll uh, use Windows Explorer. So that, that's quite interesting to know. Yeah, really interesting. But at the same time, not that common. Right. Yeah, so that's, we, that's we, we find that, yeah, we do find that it is all really common that uh, companies are using Windows Explorer, so it's um, it's good to see. But at the same time, we're we're, we're not that surprised. <clears throat> Excellent. Okay, so look, thanks for responding, and we we run those polls to kind of see how you guys are managing your data, but just to make sure you're still awake and out there as well, of course. So we mentioned some myths earlier. Now let's start addressing some of those myths. Those myths around data management. First one is then there's no need for data management within a company. I'm fine managing my data, maybe even in a Windows Explorer, funnily enough. So let's have a look at some common challenges with managing your data in Windows Explorer. So they could be things like reference management. Within an event or assembly, for example, you have lots of lots of files and references. You have assemblies, you have sub-assemblies, you have children of those assemblies, you have parents of those assemblies. Managing those in files within Windows Explorer can be a challenge, especially if they're moved, renamed, or copy and pasted elsewhere. Concurrent design is a key one. Being able, being able to make sure that two designers, or even more than two designers, can work on the same model, assembly, file at the same time without overlapping on each other's changes. And I mentioned before about files getting lost. Well, one of the most common challenges when using Windows Explorer is files getting lost, moved, or even renamed. The next one is then finding that information. Now within Windows Explorer, yeah, it's we, we can do basic searches, but we can't search on things like the metadata in the background, maybe even the material used, some of that support and information that you're creating when you're actually designing your files. So Lee, that's, that's quite, a, quite a very interesting topic there. Uh, just the other day, I had a discussion with a customer who mentioned they use Windows Explorer to manage their data. And some of the major issues that, that you know, he's, he's mentioned to me was files being saved locally on, on users' desktops uh, and some files being saved, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the server uh, folders that's, that's designated for these file saving, uh, you know, caused a big issue because whenever they opened up a, uh, an assembly, for example, they always got these unresolved errors and these issues that, uh, you know, they had to go back and find files and relink really them into the design. Apart from that, the colleagues, uh, you know, overwrote, um, were overriding each other's files because, you know, as we know, it's very common for us to open up a file and mistakenly hit save, not realizing that we actually overriding our our current design. Yeah, exactly, and it's a, it's a very common challenge, especially then you mentioned before. Um, being able to find the right information, or maybe even inventor, for example, coming up and saying there's a missing reference. When yeah, using the data yeah. management system, all those all those different references and files are maintained and managed by that system. A background database will take care of that. Within it, within Windows Explorer, you have to manage that yourself. And let's take a quick example of what that might look like. So sure. here I have an assembly within Win Windows Explorer, and what I'm going to do is just check, open it, make sure it's okay before then going in making a change. Now I need to make a change to a part number. Now that part number I change by maybe renaming the, the file name first and then updating the part number later down the line. But because I've done a file rename within Windows Explorer, this is the kind of result I get. 
Inventor does not know where that file change is. I have to go in and look for that file. And this comes back to then some of those non-value added activities we talked about earlier. Now let's have a look at the same assembly, but within Vault. First, I can preview the file. I, without opening it, I can do a lightweight preview to make sure it is the file that I want to edit. I can also see which files are used within an assembly. So I can make an informed decision before making any design changes. What I'm gonna do is pop over to that file and just make sure that I can see it firstly, and then I'm gonna start my rename wizard. Now, another benefit of using the rename wizard with Vault is I can start to apply some of my corporate number numbering schemes. These might be sequential numbers, for an example. And I also get the option to update the part number at the same time. Once I've closed that then, I'm gonna just make sure that it's still referenced in the assembly, which it is. I can see that by going to the where use tab. <clears throat> Once I've then went back over to the assembly, I can open that up and check that it's referenced in the file, which it is. So we can see that two-way association is updated. Let's open that in Inventor. And as you can see here, we have no reference issues. Let's just go onto the Vault tab and show you that the file is still referenced. So I think that's a great example of getting away from some of those problems that we might have when, when using Win the likes of Windows Explorer, a non-CAD where uh, tool to manage some of our design data, our complex design data, I might add. <clears throat> now, another myth about data management is that it's only going to benefit large organizations, companies with multiple sites across multiple geos, lots of teams. But in reality, that doesn't tend to be true. Centralizing your data management can give you multiple benefits, and some of them are less obvious than others. The things like being able to centralize your backup. The storage is centrally managed, so you don't have to worry about backing up your own information and data to a centralized resource by copying it. As soon as you put a file within Vault, for example, that is then taken care of by the server. We also have a lot of security protocols built in. So whether that be role-based access, so I only see the right information and data that I want to see, but even restricting files when they go to a certain release state. For example, when a file goes from work in progress to check to approve, I might only want it to be visible to a certain group of people, not maybe the whole design team. Again, when it goes to released, I might only want everybody to have read-only access to the file at that time. So shop floor, manufacturing, people out on site can't make changes to released versions of that file. So here are some of the key benefits of working in a, a common data platform. Concurrent design, making sure you're working on the latest version of that information. And that is that includes the support and attachments like specs or supplier information, for example. We all go, oh, we get informed decisions as well. So we can see how a file is going to affect another file straight up, or what changes have been made and why have they been made and when did they get made by who? I mentioned before centralizing that backup as well, and that's key. When you vault your data, you know that it can be taken care of by a centralized server, for example. Standardization is key for many companies, and we can do this by using some add-ons to the vault system like data standards, where we can make sure that files are corrected or created by the right templates. The folder structure for a project is built correctly, the relevant property information is captured on file creation. So let's have a look at what it looks like when using Vault for concurrent design. Now, what I have here is within my Inventor tool, I'm going to log directly into, into Vault. And firstly, then I'm going to request some files to check out. Check out puts a tag against that file so I can work on it. Now straight away, I want to see who's been working on certain elements of the file, and I can do that by visualizing Vault data directly into my designs. Once I've done that, I get a good idea of what files are already locked or maybe changes have been made by another member of the design team, which means I can go in and start making my designs without affecting anybody else's. From within the Vault browser, then, I can do things like direct check-in or check-out of that data means I'm sending it from my machine 
back to the server for centralized backup. Now I'm going to make another design change, but before I do that, let's pop back into the vault. Now I can see here this version of the drone, my colleague is actually working on it, and I can do that by referencing the vault um, browser over here. But the change I want to make is within the subassembly that doesn't affect anything my colleague is doing. So I can go ahead and make that informed decision to check that data out and make my design change before then saving that information and checking it back into Vault. So once I've done that, I've updated the core assembly, check that in, add any comments that need to be seen, and that will then represent itself back in the top level assembly, which my colleague is working on a subset of. So that's how we can start to use Vault to leverage concurrent design. <clears throat> now, another myth is that not all CAD, we know that not all CAD users work in 2D and many designers are still using tool sets like AutoCAD to create and manage their designs. And a common myth is then that 2D designers do not need to use product data management. But we believe there's some features that will make PDM essential for some AutoCAD users, for example. Finding information is key. And I mentioned before that finding information and data is what we class as a non-value-added activity. And it's something that we can help you improve. There's a lot of information that goes into every DWG file, every AutoCAD file, like attributes and title block information. Within Vault then we can index that information and make it searchable. So what you can see here is an advanced search where we're searching on a file type, we're searching on a provider, but we're also searching on text that lives within that file. So now we can start to not just search for file names, we can search for the words that are built into the design, into those attributes, into those title blocks. The next is then being able to go back and view previous versions or even previous revisions without having to have them side by side. You can view a table of what's been changed and why, even some comments, some dates, and who made that change as well. We can even then revert back to a previous version, which is key for any data management suite. But with here, any XREFs, any logo references that you might have will be updated and maintained. Whenever we're, then we check a file into Vault, we're creating a, a lightweight visualization. And that lightweight visualization is a great way to start to mark up and annotate. Maybe add that drawing to an engineering change order. Within that engineering change order, we might, might want to add a markup that doesn't want to represent itself within the DWG file. So we do it on the preview. Again, a really nice lightweight version. Now, revision tables are kind of key to any drawing. Um, and within Vault then, because the workflows are managed by the central system, we can start to use that data to populate our drawing-based revision tables. So every time a file goes from released back to work in progress, we might bump the revision from A to B, for example, because we're making a change to the form, fit, or function of the file. At that point, we set away a task that goes away and adds that revision to the revision table, who approved it, the date, and maybe even any description or maybe even any comments that have been put forward. There's also some specific capabilities that aren't just related to AutoCAD, but maybe even the mechanical tool sets as well, as well as the electrical tool sets. First, we support the mechanical, the mechanical structure workflow, such as externalizing the component when there's a new draw managed by Vault with a reference to the original file that can be seen on the where used information, for example. In addition, we, in, we have an embedded bill of material information created from part references, and they're understood and supported when we're actually putting files in within a vault. So here you go, vault, hopefully then, is not just for 3D users, or 2D users are gonna get benefits as well. <clears throat> Now, uh, the subject of cloud hosting and data and files within a cloud environment is a common concern for business owners. Cloud can mean a number of different things depending on your requirement. A customer recently said to me, cloud, does that not just mean you're using somebody else's computer? But 
to a degree is actually correct. So let's define what cloud means at, at Autodesk. As you can see here that we have a number of different cloud offerings and all these here are centralized in the, the, themselves around Vault. We have everything from our lightweight online viewer using things like shared views. We have our cloud synchronization tool sets like Fusion Team and BIM 360 Docs. And we'll come back to Fusion Team and have a look at, the, at that in a little bit. But we also have things like Fusion Lifecycle where we can start to extend out our product portfolio or our product design out to the wider business. And that doesn't have to stop there. We can do things like process management, looking at new product introduction or new product development as well. So Lee, uh, cloud is, is, is actually quite an interesting topic for me um, uh, because lots of discussions that I have with customers in the past, uh, you know, the, the main concern is uh, the data security around the cloud. And I guess with the pandemic, people or customers that did not adopt the cloud before that found it quite a challenge to actually collaborate data with colleagues, uh, you know, working remotely. And some of them resorted to manual ways of emailing out files or using VPN. How how is how is that addressed with the Autodesk solutions? Yeah, so we we have a number of options available to us now. If we take Vault for an example, Vault tends to be an on-premise um, application, but we can start to extend that workflow by leveraging the cloud-based tools. So as you can see on this slide here, we can have Vault managed within our company, within our firewall but we can start to share information and data using some of our, our cloud hosting facilities, giving access to the, the web to customers, suppliers, or even home workers. But we can go a little bit further than that as well. We can start to then host our Vault server centrally on the internet, for example, using AWS or Azure services. We also have Citrix for virtualization of the application. Some companies as well then don't just want to be able to keep the server within their for, within their firewall, but open up the port so that people can start to access that information from home. And there's a lot of companies who have helped do that. And we do that by making their vault server accessible from the web using our secure protocols, and maybe even putting restrictions in place to say, it can only be accessed by a machine that has a certain certificate on it or maybe even a machine that has a certain IP address. So uh, to answer your question, Daniel, it's a really common question. There's a number of options available to those companies who possibly are struggling to access their data. That's really, really interesting. And, and really, uh, I think for me, uh, you know, hosting your, your, your vault in the cloud using one of the platforms like Azure or AWS is really beneficial, uh, especially during, you know, the, the, the new normal that we, we, we find ourselves in, um, which is really, really interesting. Thank you for that. No problem. And I believe then it's, a, it's, it's time for another poll to see if our audience is still out there. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay, I'm going to be launching the poll now. You've got a minute and the uh, poll will close in a minute. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to close the, the poll now. Okay, so if we look at the results, quite interesting. 27% uh, of users on uh, say that they they use it. That's great. And we've got 55% of them saying they don't. Uh, they don't need to collaborate externally. So thank you for that. Interesting, interesting feedback. Yeah, some really good insights there, and it's it's nice and all. It's nice to know, firstly, some of the challenges that you guys might have sharing and accessing information. But again, we're always interested in, in some of the technologies you're using to host platforms like Vault. 
Yeah, and I guess for, for the 18% uh, that say it is too risky. Um, so how do we address that, Lee? Yeah, I mean, a, a, again, a really common um, a common stance on cloud hosting. It, what I would do then is probably go back to a previous slide I had where we looked at then Vault being an on-premise solution, but we also then start to leverage some of our cloud tools. And what we're going to do um, in a couple of slides time is actually look at how we leverage Fusion Team to share data with our external parties um, mm -hmm. by keeping Vault in our firewall as well. So hopefully that will address some of those concerns. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. So now we're going to look at then how we can help. And as we go down the line, we're going to look at some technology snippets out of Vault. But first, when we think about data management from a product point of view, you might think of some words like these, categories, design reuse, bill of material, concurrent design, for example. But how do we define PDM at Autodesk? Well, product data management, PDM, is a software that can track and control documents related to a particular product design, typically within engineering. PDM within Vault then, within, sorry, Autodesk is Vault. And here's some stats around our current Vault user base. The Vault customer base is now over 10,000 customers, everything from five users to thousands of users. And they're representing over 150,000 active individual users to manage their, their, their data within Vault. Those CAD users then are creating and managing over 1.5 billion files within Vault, Inventor files, AutoCAD files, and many other file types. Not even some of our own sometimes, we have SolidWorks in there and some 3D stuff. Now for a long time, Vault has been a best in class data management system for storing all your project and product related information. Whether you're an AutoCAD user storing drawings or an inventor user storing models, all these internal stakeholders have access to a centralized database and related information. We also have file life cycles and engineering change orders to help us control access to data and track what changes need to be made and why. <clears throat> Vault is then a CAD integrated PDM system. So that means, for instance, inside AutoCAD, Vault is there and it represents itself as a toolbar. There's menu pull down showing the current status of files as well as any links to other supporting files. And we don't stop there. Most of the Autodesk portfolio and similar applications have a similar toolbar as well, whether you're an Inventor user, Revit user, or even a Navisworks user. But we can start to dig a little bit deeper into some of the data that we have. So what you can see here is a design uh, insights. What we're doing then is we're taking all that rich CAD information and showing it back to you. So Lee, that's, that's pretty great, uh, having a look at those insights. So how would that affect an engineering manager or project manager um, uh, project management team uh, that's working on a project that perhaps you know wants to see where the design and what stage it is at uh, you know on the project and, and how does it impact the customers that you come across in in the past yeah really good question again so the we know now that not or a lot of companies are moving to more of a project design methodology and being able to real-time visualize the current status of maybe even a file design is kind of key to any any project manager or even anybody that's part of that that one project so you can see here using the pyramid graph we have our workflow state of our of our of our files and this is based on a folder project project folder if you will so you can see here that a lot of the files are, are still at work in progress but we have a small portion that are at a release state as well so we can start to build up an insight of how far along that project are so that's really, really interesting. So, so with this, in other words, we can see, you know, what files are still being reviewed, what files are still work in progress, and what files are released, and perhaps what files are, are, are needs to be worked on urgently. Yeah, exactly. So which files are lacking behind the timeline, if you will. And we go a little bit further into there as well. As you can see, we're pulling out maybe even the category of files. So we can see how many files are purchase parts, for example, how many part files are 
frame generator so we can start to build in you know what let's put some pressure on our structural steel steels um department we can also dig a little bit deeper into the actual design as well and see which materials are used and you can see that across that bottom bar so lots of valuable insights that are available at, well directly from the dashboard within bolt and this is something by the way that the the product team are focusing a lot of their efforts in they want to give more information back to the designers i think that's really interesting and that project dashboard looks really really good yeah it no i i agree and if um hopefully at the end of this we'll be able to show some information about um what's coming next in vault um and i can share the link with our public facing roadmap and you can see some of the work that's going on to build out these insights within the tool so let's have a look at what that actually looks like within vault itself so we're going to look at some insights within data and what the use case here is we've made a design but we want to get a good idea if this file has already been created within a vault. So we've added then a function called duplicate search. Duplicate search gives us the ability to query a certain part or component within our design to see if it's already been used within our vault. So you can see here I've done an assembly wide search and it's came back saying yes, somebody has already desi designed that ring and you can then start to go away and replace that within your assemblies. The benefit of doing that is that component might already have a part number. It might have already been assigned to a number of assemblies within your vault. We're not just then looking at the file name like we used to. We're looking at the geometry of the file as well. So we're inspecting that geometry before confirming it is actually a duplicate. File name does not come into it. When that, if we dig a little bit deeper into that, that might be even a supplier part, for example. So here you can see a mortar that is a bought-in component. Straight away, I've detected it's a duplicate, so I've went in and then replaced it with the component that's already in my vault that has a necessary, necessary part numbers assigned to it. And we're giving the end users visibility of how many duplicates are actually within their vault. This is a live report. It gives us an idea of which files are duplicates, where they're based, any comments they're assigned to, and even which assemblies they're used in. So we're giving insights back to the end user to help them progress their designs and stop a lot of that rework. Now let's take a look at change management. Now, unfortunately, design changes are in inevitable. So being able to react to them with the relevant data and information is key to succeed, to make sure that product goes out the, goes out the door quick and we can respond to change in a, in a timely manner. So let's have a look at what change looks like within Autodesk Vault. Now we call these engineering change orders, but in essence, what it is, is it's a form or a way to capture all the relevant change information that you want to on a particular design. So you can see here, we've started a change order and we're starting to add information into that change order. Due date, for example, any support and comments. We can then add records to that. Now the records might be a bill of material item. On top of the records, we can start to add files. Now files do not have to just be CAD designs. They could be support and information. They could be photographs. They could be a PDF output, maybe even with some supplier details on. Depending on the change type, we pick a routing group. Now that routing group might be senior management, for example, or a change control board. Once we've got that information gathered, we can move then the engineering change order from the creation stage to the open stage. And anybody that's involved in that change order might receive an email or see the change order sitting in them, I outstanding work. We've got a number of options available to us then on the routing. We can go directly through a quick change route, a quick approval route, for example, or we can push it all the way down the normal route. Here, I'm making a change and I'm adding comments as I go along. Each time a comment's added, we might want to send an email out to the stakeholders to say why. Once that change has then been verified, we can start to make the necessary lifecycle changes to the file. In this instance, I'm moving the file from release to work in progress to make sure I can start making 
those design changes that have been requested by this change order. <clears throat> Once that review state, the change order can be rejected or it can be pushed to approved. In this instance, we're going to approve it, add a comment, and that's our change order now complete. Going back in there, we can see then a full audit trail of what's been going on, all the correspondence, all the comments that have been sent out to the stakeholders involved in that change. Now let's have a chat about bill of material. Now bill of material is quite a common um, subject, especially when we're talking about engineering designs or even data management. Everything you check into Vault then is the recipe for your product. Your drawings, your designs, your CAD data becomes the structure of your engineering bill of materials. It's to get it then for the next, ready for the next stage of the journey, we, we can start to add what we call items to that. An item is just something that with a couple of characteristics, for example, it could be a unique part number, Normally, when we talk about a part number or an, a property, we, we talk about things like this. We want a title, we want units, we want quantities. Those items then tend to have support and information that go along with them. Now, this could be a Word document with, as I say, supplier details on. It might detail pain specs or maybe even spare parts manuals. We might want to attach images to it, an image of the final design, some marketing material, for example. We also have other documents. Now, we know that a bill of material doesn't just contain design or design core parts, not just CAD files. We might have software included within there. We might have other files that need to be referenced within that bill of material. And of course, we've got our CAD designs as well. And then our external outputs. How do we want to share the representations or maybe even the outputs with other systems? Are we sending it via DWF? Are we sending it via a PDF? Are we sending it via a CSV file? <clears throat> and all these information then, all this information can be managed within the item details page of Vault. Lee, that's, that's quite an interesting one. Bill of materials, I know, is quite a big topic, and I'm sure we can spend quite a bit of time uh, discussing this. But just a quick one from, from my side, I think, is um, is, it, is it a very efficient system for sharing data with other departments, perhaps uh, procurement that need to access bill of material data of the design, or the workshop team, uh, you know, accessing that bill of materials? Yeah, so we can start the we can start to then use the information we've built up in our CAD tools to start to share some of that bill of material information. And as you said, there's a lot of departments within a company that need to consume a bill of materials. Everything from purchasing, maybe even the shop floor, so the shop floor can have a visual representation, but they can also have the documented bill of materials. And we can do that via a number of different ways. We can open it up via the Vault Office client, the thin client, which we'll touch on in a little bit. But there's a number of different ways with, with sending that information downstream. Now, you might want to use Vault to start to build your bill of materials before then exporting it to an ERP system, for example, where you can then start purchasing those parts and apply and supplier information to them. So, yes, lo lots of options available to you. Thank you. That's, that sounds quite good. So let's have a look at then what bill of materials looks like within Vault. So the story starts very at a high level where the engineer puts all the designs and intent and builds a structure using their CAD tool. Once they've done that, they've already got that initial start of the recipe to build that bill of materials. And that's what it looks like. We've got assemblies, we've got sub-assemblies. For instance, what you can see on the screen there is an assembly of a 3D printer, and it's quite a complex device. Once we've built that bill of materials, we can then extract that and promote that to items within Vault. Here then, that folder structure is maintained, but we also get information like the position number, we get the quantities on there, and we also get support and information that might be relevant to a bill of material. Some of that design, some of that information that you might have within your CAD tool will also be transmitted over here, but we can start to add additional items in here. We could possibly build an item for lubricant, an item for glue, for example, 
and start to then build that engineering bill of materials and export it downstream to our other systems, as Daniil mentioned. Now, I mentioned earlier about collaboration and how collaboration is key when using some of your data management tools. And we already showed this slide, but we have a number of options available to us. So we're going to have a quick look at three of those. <clears throat> One is our Autodesk viewer. Here we can share representations and quickly gather feedback using the Autodesk viewing technology. Some of you might already use that, known as shared views. We have that built into AutoCAD, Inventor, and into Vault. Number two is the ability to be able to deliver files to customers using Autodesk Drive directly out of Vault. We can upload a pack and go directly to our drive, which is CAD aware with an inbuilt viewer, and give, it, give our third party stakeholders access to that. And the next one is to be able to collaborate on designs automatically by exchanging information with external collaborators using Fusion Team or BIM 360 Docs. And what we've decided to do then is take a bit of a deep, deep dive into the third one, the access of data using Fusion Team, where we can start to get people to share data with them, but also retrieve their design changes back into our vault system so we can consume them in our assemblies. What we're doing here is then keeping our vault system within a firewall, but also then using the cloud-based Fusion platform to invite our subcontractors, our suppliers, and our customers into there. Now, we also have an option of accessing data through what we call the thin client. So within, within Vault Professional, we have a website. Now that website, I mentioned before, you might want to just represent released only data to there. You might want to show bill of material data to another system in a read only format. And we can do that without any additional installations. We can keep this website within our firewall or extend it out. And it gives us then read only access to vaulted information in a secure way using role-based management. Now let's take a look at what that external collaboration looks like. Firstly, I find a file that I want to share with my external party. In this instance, I want them to make a design change. So I move then the lifecycle state of that file and its subcomponents to a certain state. Now the reason I've done that is if I look at my settings, I have here my collaboration settings and I've set a filter to say only synchronize data when it goes to this workflow state. Now as soon as the files have went to that state they're sent up to my Fusion Team site and here I can start to invite in my third-party stakeholders and give them then access to the data whether they're a viewer or an editor. Now imagine I've then received a link via an email. Here I can then go into the file I can see what the assembly uses, possibly even where it's used in. Is it in an assembly? Is it in a drawing? And then from there, I can hit the edit in desktop button. What that does is then download these files and open them directly into my CAD tool, in this instance, Inventor. Now that I've got the assembly, I can start making my design changes. So I'm going to go in, make a quick edit to one of these sub assemblies. Once I've then made that design change, that is then saved locally before then updating in the cloud environment, in this instance, Fusion Team. So once I've done that, if I flick back over to Fusion Team, this design is now being updated. So within my vault, back within my engineering team, I've got a notification to say a file has been updated. So what I do now is hit the download from Cloud Drive button, find the file I want to retrieve and hit download. In the background then, the job processor will go away and start to download that file to my local machine before then adding it to my vault. Now to show you the design change, I have here the history tab within vault. So I can go in to see when the file was sent up and also when the file was retrieved back down. Now I have then that design that's been edited by that third party subcontractor back into my vault. <clears throat> now we have two options when you're looking at this project sync capability. 
we just looked at fusion teams, but we also have something called BIM 360 docs. Now, this table here is a bit of a comparison for you guys to see the difference between the two. BIM 360 docs tends to be used by AEC teams. If you're using data like Revit, for example, where fusion teams will be used by design and manufacturing teams, typically using Inventor and AutoCAD. If you do want any more information, kind of reach out and we'll, uh, we'll uh, hopefully answer that. Now, Autodesk and the Vault team are very proud to announce that Vault has finally went mobile. We're now in the 21st century, which gives you then more flexibility to access your data from anywhere within your company, as well as any device. So I want to kind of take you through what the user experience looks like when managing something like a change order, for example. So let's have a look at that. So firstly, then let's dive into Vault. And here we have an assembly that we want to share or with somebody that's on the shop floor, for example. So within our mobile device, we can do all the usual stuff. We can go away and search for files depending on properties or file names. Once we've found that file, we have all of that support and information that we have in Vault. Which does it, what file does it use? Where is it used? The nice thing is here, we have that, that Forge-based that forge based viewer that we can do things like markups we can do live explosions and inspections all from our mobile device without the need for any software to be installed once i view that file i might want to say right take me to the file item where i can start to look at the bill of material from here then i'm going to raise an engineering change order now straight away i can start out all the necessary information that i would have added in vault onto my change order, all again for my mobile device. I can set things like due by dates. I can then start to add any additional information that I want. Now, because we're using the mobile device, we can start, if you've got any documents on that mobile device, we can start to add them to the change order. We can also access then the camera of the change order. So for example, maybe it's a problem you've spotted on the shop floor or out during installation. You can take a photo of that and attach it to the change order. Now back in Vault, we can see there's a change order that's being raised and I'm a member of it. I'm going to submit that change order and add a comment. That comment then is fed straight back to the person that, that launched the change order. So we're adding a comment here, asking if we want to include the review and that comment will be transmitted directly onto the mobile device. So this gives us a greater way of collaborating with our remote parties, even someone that's doing a remote installation somewhere, or even somebody that's just down on the shop floor. They can view all the necessary information and they can start to launch change orders. We don't just stop there. We, we can also start to do things like design reviews. We can do things like copy design, all from within a mobile device. Now, the current state of Vault Mobile is we're at release preview, but we'd love for you guys to go away and test it. So if you follow that QR code, it should take you to the Vault Mobile application. At the moment, we're not acquiring a license for this. So go away, test it, give us your feedback, let us know if you have any problems, and we'd love to see you guys using the application. So with that, um, let me summarize some of the topics we've covered. Hopefully we've debunked some of those myths about data management. We went through cloud security. We went through the looking at some different collaboration options. We went through some core features of Vault around change management and items. And we've also shown you some new technology within, within Vault Mobile. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time and pass back over to Daniil. Oh, thank you very much for that, Lee. I think it was very, very insightful uh, information that you shared. I think one of the great things is the is the Vault Mobile, which uh, which which a lot of uh, uh, people, you know, it's new to a lot of people. So, uh, so I guess that's 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 quite nice uh, in a sense. And I and I would encourage everyone to actually go out and and uh, have a you know have a exquisite it, have a play with it, download it, and provide feedback. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, exactly. More, more feedback, the better on that one. Yep, yeah, 100%. Uh, so, so, please, guys.
got you find on the app store if you haven't caught the QR code and you can download that and work with it uh, and just just provide feedback on on the interface itself so i think just to summarize and and, and to look at the key takeaways from today um and, and i think some of the big ones that have resonate for me a lot more is uh, you know everyone can benefit from product data management it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, you know a team of, of 10 20 or 15 engineers um, you know, as we debunked them earlier on, it can be for smaller teams as well. The cloud does not have to have to be scary. I think we provided some great insight into the cloud and the securities behind that. And also engineering changes uh, and items don't need to be restricted directly to the uh, engineering office only. That can be shared amongst the team members that need to access that data. And the final one for me, I think, is EDM is really not complicated. It's something that can be adopted uh, by any organization of any size and it could transform the way you design and work. So with that, I'm gonna open up uh, the, the polls for questions. So uh, before that, I think we have a, have a poll uh, before the questions page. I'm gonna launch that poll quickly um, now. It's a minute and then we'll jump into questions. Questions can be directly uh, you know, placed on the chat box and you could uh, post your questions on there. So a minute for the poll, um, and then we will take it from there. Okay, thank you very much for uh, the, the answers on that. Um, so lots of people want to get access to the information. So we have a really, really nice white, uh, white paper that's been written. So uh, we will definitely send that out to you. Uh, we have a few people that want to be contacted and a few people that don't want to be contacted, which is also fine. Um, so thank you for that. that that's great information. I'm going to open up the, the, the uh, chat box for, for questions. So please, if you have any questions, uh, please post them on and we will answer them um, for you. So we've got one uh, that says, how do I get to install Vault? So that's something that we can have a chat after the, after the presentation uh, with your details there. Uh, we will give you a shot and um, take you through the process of install, installing Vault and how to, you can get access to that. So the next question is, will all these collaborations be possible when using a free version of Vault? Uh, Lee, do you want to handle that one? Yeah, so not, not, all, not all of them. Um, we have things like the Autodesk Drive is a subscription benefit. So if you have a subscription to Inventor or the Product Design Suite collection, for example, you get access to Autodesk Drive. So that's available. The shared views capability as well tends to be built into a lot of our products. So that online review where we can add markups, all kind of free with our, with our products. But when we start looking at the Project Sync one that we did a bit of a deep dive into, that one is only available, unfortunately, in the professional product. Thank you. Thank you, Lee, for taking on that question. So is there a local South African team that can assist with setting up Vault and Fusion? Yes, um, at Baker Baines, that's one of the things that we specialize in, in our consulting side of it. Uh, so definitely we can help you out with that. Um, I'll get in touch with you afterward and we can book some time to, to get that done for you. So definitely we can.
So guys, we do have a bit more, uh, a bit of time, uh, a couple of minutes more. So uh, if you've got any questions, please put them on and uh, Lee and myself will be happy to answer them. So uh, this, is, this is an interesting question. Does a company need to be using one server rather than multi-servers to use Vault and all the communication systems? So Lee, I'm going to hand this one over to you. Yeah, so, so and the question was, do we need to uh, use multiple servers? Was that the question, sorry? Uh, yeah, so, so, it, so the question reads, does a company need to be using one server or rather multiple servers to use Vault and all the communication systems? Ah, okay, great question. <clears throat> so the answer, the answer to that is Vault can be run on a single server. As long as it's central on your network and others can, can log into that server, then yes, it can be a single server. Just to give you a bit of insight, Vault is actually a website. So when we're launching that client, we're just connecting over standard web protocols so that's why we can start to scale up by using public and private cloud quite easily because we're effectively hosting a website. So imagine then you have a single server, you install the Vault server on that, and then you then deploy your Vault clients on all of your engineers who you want to access that data. So single server is fine. Oh, thank you for that, Lee. So I see there's, there's, there's another question that's, that's come up. Uh, do you have any customers successfully referenced for PDM implementations? Yes, we do. Uh, we have quite a few customers um, within the Gauteng uh, region that we can, if you're in, if you're in Gauteng, we can definitely uh, introduce you to or reference them for you. Uh, there's also quite, uh, quite a few customers around South Africa, actually, that we've done quite, quite a few successful vault or PDM implementations with. So definitely uh, something that we, can, that we can solve for you. We can have a discussion afterwards as well uh, to, to get you into some of those references. So thank you for that. Yeah, just, so a, a, just add to one. Yes, Lee, yeah, if I could add to that, Neil. Just the we have on our on our web, on the Autodesk website as well. We have something called our case study reference finder. So you can possibly sort out um, some of the Autodesk customers based on your industry, for example, and you can see how they've leveraged some of the Vault tools and some of the collaboration tools within their organisations. Oh, thank you for that. That's that's definitely uh, a, a place that uh, people could go as well. So that's 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 excellent. Thank you for that. So we've got another question that's that's come up. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, it was informative and gave insight into capabilities of Vault. Do you offer and would you recommend training to use the platform efficiently? Definitely training. We do offer Vault training, um, administrator and client training or user training. So definitely training is recommended. Uh, for it, and uh, we can we can offer that to you. So again, we will get in contact with you afterward uh, to discuss that training requirement in more detail. Okay, we've got another question that's just come in. Uh, so how do we integrate the server solution if, let's say, the drawing office are using a different server to the rest of the company that's using Vault? Right, okay, yeah, so I'll give it to you. Yeah, again, a good a good question. Now, as long as if that server is on the same network, it doesn't have to be a member of the same domain, for example, because we're using web services to access Vault. But if the server is possibly on a completely different network, then we can do things like opening up some of those web ports to the, the World Wide Web if, as it is. Um, which means then it can't just be accessed from maybe the other company, but it could also be accessed from from home as well. But when we're, when we're looking at different infrastructure issues, we tend to just do a bit of a deep dive to say, right, okay, could this the end user get access to that even if they're on a different subdomain? And te it tends to be the answer is yes, we can, um, as long as we have some sort of route through to that server. Hopefully that answers your question, but it it can be very um, environment specific, that question. Hmm. Thank you for that. And that was a good question as well. So guys, we've got, we've got a couple of minutes more. I think we'll, we'll probably take uh, uh, two more questions. 
before we close off. Um, so thank you, Rudy. That was a good question of yours. Um, so please feel free just to add uh, uh, the last couple of questions uh, before we close the, the, the question session. So I guess there's, there's not too many questions coming in. Uh, so there's one more. Uh, so is Vault limited to the design changes and communications from the workshop, et cetera? Hmm. That's an interesting one, Lee. Yeah, it is an interesting question. So I, I would say, no, it's, it's not limited to sharing information with workshop. Um, we. As part of some of the deployments that I've been involved in, we've opened a vault to other stakeholders, maybe even sales, for example. Sales always want to get information like visualizations or maybe even PDF outputs of a design before they're ready for production. So we have been able to open it up to the wider organization as well, to likes of departments like sales for those reasons. Again, it comes down to use case. It depends what, yeah. what type of information they want to access. But you know, it's it's it, the tool itself because we've in the past we've expanded it out. We've made sure it's it's available to maybe every part of an organization on some of the large deployments, and it hasn't been limited to within the engineering or design department for that reason. Yeah, I agree. Good, good question, and I think also that's where you've got tools like Vault Office that would come into play for the non uh, CAD users, right? Yeah, exactly. So that's a nice lightweight version um, of the Vault clients for somebody who does not need to add CAD information and doesn't need to worry about some of those references. Somebody that is maybe just adding in um, Word or Excel based information. So because it's a common data platform, a product data management suite doesn't just limit it to within the engineering office. We have some smaller companies, for example, using it as their, their single source of data management. And the reason for that is they can start to attach their support information to their CAD designs and be make a two-way reference between the two. Right. So thank you for that. that. That was a good question and very well answered, Lee. Thank you for that. So I think what we can do is we can close the, the question polls for now. If you've got any questions that may have come up or uh, you, you thought about later on regarding the presentations, please get in touch with us. Our contact details are on screen at the moment um, and we will be in contact with the people that requested more information and to be contacted afterward. So thank you for that. Um, and once again, thank you Lee very, very much for your time um, and the effort on the presentation. I think it was a really, really great. Um, and uh, and thank you very much for it. Yeah, not a problem. And thank you everyone for your time um, and the invitation to, to speak at your event. Thank you. Have a great day ahead, everyone.